Okay, I'm sat here um, in Stockholm with uh, Eric Ursting, pronunciation? Yeah, that's Baby, good. right? Um, who's a master's student in the history of religion here at the University of Stockholm. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that you're interested in, um, Eric, is UFO religions or alien religions. Um, I think for many of my students, they never have heard of those. So what are alien religions? Well, I mean, like, uh, the whole concept of UFO religions, in a, in a sense, is... Uh, some kind of uh, religious groupings, mm -hmm. or that is um, said uh, formed around the concept that we are either visited or have been visited right. in, in like um, historic times by alien beings or stuff like that. And of course, it could be construed in a much broader sense that it's the whole idea of UFOs and ufology is some kind of like focal point in forming a religious movement or. Yeah. So the, there's a kind of religious sense in which we might be kind of connected with the stars and people yeah. beyond, and that's been very, that was very popular back in the 70s with Eric von Danke, I think, the yeah. character of the gods. Yeah, exactly. And, and he was, of course, um, I mean, he was probably like the main popularizer of these kind of ideas, yeah. but they had, of course, been like around since um, early 20th century, I guess. That old? Yeah. Like, uh, a good example is uh, the American writer Charles Fort from right. um, his first book, Book of the Damned, from 1919, I think. Right. It's like one of the early ex examples of this mm. idea that mankind is some kind of, um, at least has been historically in, in some kind of contact. I mean, like, Fort's idea was that, um, that, that mankind was like the property of beings coming from outside. Right. Who can, like, almost farm us. I guess. Yeah, it, it was like um, if you had like the uh, analogy of looking at humans and cattle, we were like the cattle of alien beings in a sense. Right, and kind of farmstead earth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, 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 something like that. That's kind of interesting, but then of course we come through, following all that through, um, towards things that look much more to people like religions or new religious movements or cults. So people may or perhaps have not, if they're sort of younger, have heard of Heaven's Gate. Um, no. Or alien. So these are much more religious groups in this yeah. sense of the word? I mean, like, the, the whole idea about UFOs exists mm. in a sense like a continuum from, from very... Um, you can almost have like a continuum from the, the explicit religious movements to the very uh, almost secular, almost like scientific, uh, trying to become mm. scientific movements in a sense. And, and also, I mean... You can have like uh, you can look upon it like in different uh, levels of organizations. So you have like the the kind of people who are almost if you like use the term audience cult. You know that people who read about UFOs. So it's kind of one of their interests, and they yeah. seek out TV shows on it and books, but they don't actually do anything that yeah, they exactly. consume. Okay. I, I guess you could say that it exists in like different levels. So you have mm. like the explicit religious groups like the Raelians and the Heaven Gates and the Ethereal Society, mm. and um, and then you have like the the people interested in like the ufological um, or like the UFO phenomena, if you want to use yeah. that concept. So it's it's a very diverse field, and I guess it, you could say that mm. it intersects in certain points. But it's also, yeah. um, you could, I guess, you could characterize it by com competing producers of materials in a in a sense in a field. Yeah, that's quite an interesting way to kind of uh, look at it in a very kind of market like sense. Um, those that sit at the end of the spectrum that. I guess interest my students or meant to interest them more, yeah. but they're probably interested in other things, uh, are probably the ones at the more religious yeah. end of the spectrum. So they were the ones you mentioned with the Raelians and Heaven's yeah. Gate, and what was the other one you mentioned? Well, the Ethereal Society was right. this. It's, um, I guess if, if, uh, it could be a good point to, to just very briefly discuss like the development of ufology mm, and yeah. you know, UFO ideas. I mean, um, uh, ufology kind of, it's, it's hard to say where it started, but it's like a common date is, is, um, is June in 1947, because that was kind of when the whole idea of um, flying saucers began. Mm -hmm. And also the, the interesting thing with like the whole flying saucer mythology is that it started as kind of a, um, uh, it was a, oh, I'm losing my thread here now, yeah. um, you know, um, Put, is it kind of to do with the mix of kind of populist culture and entertainment? Well, things, or is it um, more kind of well, you know, you know, if, if people look at uh, t today on like UFOs, uh, yeah. people would probably say that most people would just um, equate it with with ideas about alien visitors. Yeah. But the thing is that during the first years, um, 
the idea of flying saucers were kind of not construed to be alien spacecraft. It was kind of oh, really? more, more construed to be some kind of secret Russian or uh, American weapon or something like that. And then in the early 1950s, it kind of shifted towards being seen as being alien spacecraft. Uh, so the initial UFOs were yeah. unidentified, yeah. and there were these kind of things in the sky, but the idea of them being aliens came a bit later. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's like, um, and, and um, this will, of course, intersect with popular culture in a very interesting because one of the main popularizers of this idea was a man named uh, Ray Palmer, who was a mm -hmm. um, sci-fi pulp publisher. Yeah. So he was kind of influential in, in pub publishing that kind of ideas. But what, what happened in the early 50s was that people were starting to um, go public with the idea right. that they had met alien beings and they, mm -hmm. that they were... Um, somehow in uh, in contact with beings from like Venus and, right, other, yeah. uh, and other planets uh, like often in the solar system and and uh, I suppose that time was a time when there was kind of more mass media more kind of film radio and things and the idea seems to have really taken off you know UFOs as, as an idea gets popular quickly in North America yeah I mean it was, it was like uh, it was really like the summer of 47 was like a really it was like almost like a saucer craze, I guess people would, right. would describe it. And then people thought it was to die off, like, mm. because this was not like the first time that people were reporting to have seen aerial objects and stuff like that. Right. But, but the, the thing that like made uh, the 47 wave differ from earlier um, mm. similar f yeah. phenomena was that this kind of lingered on and continued. And so in that sense, it, it gets cemented in the public mind. I guess. And I guess we get then people who write science fiction, which is also kind of, has metaphors for the Cold War in it. Yes. It's emerging, it's, so it all gets kind of yeah, um, I mean, it's, connected. That, uh, that's, that's like a good point, because like a lot of people who have looked upon this had, had um, has made this kind of like Cold War connection, that, that these um, um, the ideas that the alien beings were kind of visiting here because they were um, concerned about humans using nuclear power and nuclear weapons in a mm. in a very immature way, so to speak, and that, that the detonation of the atomic bombs and the yeah. hydrogen bombs were in a sense um, something that could like destabilize the cosmos. Yeah, that's, that's really kind of interesting point. And we go from that kind of view of it through to the present day where we now have people who, well, Heaven's Gate, of course, people know about perhaps in the Hellbop yeah. kind of comic, and um, perhaps some people some of my students perhaps don't, but people who strongly believed in aliens, but in a very religious sense. Yeah. And that they've got this, they have a kind of our care at their sort of, kind of God benevolence, they're kind of benevolent overlords. Yeah, I mean, if you look upon like the, the Raelian religion, they would mm. consider like the alien beings to be our ancestors in, in, in a certain way. We are descending from them, that they created us in mm. laboratories. And, right. And, um, that they they came to Earth and and, and made us f through genetic technology in a sense, right. and that we are now just on the verge of uh, ourselves becoming uh, like reaching the same level of technological supremacy so that we could eventually become as gods ourselves, or like so gods. That, yeah. So there's that sense of a, a kind of a realizing our true nature, or yeah. self-realization narrative. Yeah. Like to to. Um, to like tra transcend our like destructive force uh, within us and trying to become um, like worthy of our inheritance in a sense, I guess they would. Yeah. That's a very optimistic note, I think, perhaps. To yeah. But thank you for that overview.